Welcome to the IT Free Training video for Group Policy Preferences. This video will show you how to unlock the functionality of Group Policy Preferences, allowing you to customize the user experience on a level that was never achievable before. Group Policy Preferences were first introduced in Windows Server 2008. It was not created by Microsoft, but instead was a third party product called PolicyMaker that Microsoft purchased. Preferences add a lot of functionality to group policy. A lot of this functionality was previously done with scripts, for example, login scripts. Preferences differ from traditional group policy in that they are not enforced like group policy. Group policy preferences are applied to the system, but the user has the choice to change the settings or use their own. Like group policy, preferences require a client side extension, or CSE, in order for it to be applied on the target operating system. Without the CSE support on the client, the settings will simply be ignored. Windows Server 2008 and Windows 7 come with the CSE built in. However, operating systems like Windows Vista and Windows XP need to have the CSE added. This can be done by downloading the update through the Microsoft website or installing the update through Windows Update. The CSE update will appear as an optional update in Windows Update. I will now change to my Windows 2008 domain controller to have a look at how to set up Group Policy Preferences. First of all, I will open Group Policy Management from the Start menu. If you have watched our previous videos on Group Policy, you will remember that I configured many settings in Group Policy for options like the wallpaper and loopback processing. For this demonstration, I have removed all these settings so that I can start the clean slate, so to speak. To configure Group Policy Preferences, I will first create a new Group Policy under the New York OU. I will call this new Group Policy object New York Policy. Once the Group Policy object has been created, I will right-click on it and select Edit. In the Group Policy under Preferences, you can see that preferences are divided into two sections, Window Settings and Control Panel Settings. To start with, I will look at Window Settings. In the previous Group Policy videos, I configured the desktop wallpaper using settings found under Administrative Tools. Unfortunately, this setting is only found under the User side of Group Policy, not the Computer side. In this video, I will use preferences to bridge the gap allowing me to configure desktop wallpaper based on the computer and even the operating system the client is running. To do this, I will first use preferences to create some folders on the local computer. To do this, select Folders and right-click on the left side and select New Folder. In this case, I will create a new folder on the C drive called IT Support. Under this directory, I will create a subfolder called Wallpaper. In this case, the folder will contain desktop wallpaper, but I can copy and create additional folders and copy additional files as required. For example, I could copy over files to this folder that could be used to help troubleshoot the computer when there are problems. Now that a local folder has been created, the next step that I will do is select the Files option. Like before, all I need to do is select the option New File. For the source file, I will specify a wallpaper that I created for Windows XP computers. Once selected, the next part is to select the destination. This is where the magic happens. For the destination, I will enter in the wallpaper folder that I created on the C drive. However, I will change the name of the file to Default. I could also create additional file settings for other operating systems, like Windows Vista and Windows 7. But if I do that at present, won't they overwrite each other? The trick to getting this to work is to select the Common tab. On the Common tab is the option Item Level Targeting, probably the most powerful feature of Preferences. If I now select the button Targeting, you will notice at the top the option New Item. Just look at how many different items you can specifically target settings for. You can test for a particular operating system, hardware like the CPU, RAM, the computer name, just to name a few. In this case, I will select the option 
operating system. For the operating system, I will select Windows XP. I now have a setting that will copy the Windows XP wallpaper to the local system only if the operating system is Windows XP. I would also need to create settings for Windows Vista and Windows 7. This would ensure that the file default.jpg on the local drive is the wallpaper for that operating system. If I move back to the last screen, notice that there are other options that are worth looking at, like remove this item when it is no longer applied. This means that if this setting is no longer being applied to that computer, it will be removed. This is a useful option to have. The next part I want to configure is the desktop wallpaper setting found under user configuration. This is not a preference setting, but this shows how the settings can be used together to achieve a result that was not possible before. The setting that I will configure is desktop wallpaper, an option that is not available under the computer side of group policy. This essentially means that you could not normally configure desktop wallpaper based on the operating system that was running. For this setting, I will configure the file name to the default.jpg file located on the C drive. Computer policy preferences will ensure that the default file will contain the correct wallpaper for that computer. This group policy setting simply needs to ensure that the file is used for the wallpaper. Since this video is on preferences, I want to also configure some preferences on the user side of group policy. If I expand down into preferences, the option that I will select is Drive Maps and select the option New Mapped Drive. In here, I can enter in the path for the mapped drive and also select the drive that the mapped drive will use. Once this drive is added, I will also add a second mapped drive using the same method. Once all the details are entered, I will select the tab Common. Once again, I will select the item level targeting. One point I would like to make with preferences is notice that you can select the option Security Group. This means that you could potentially only map the drive if the user was a member of a certain group. This essentially means that when a user is added to a group, group policy could be configured to automatically connect them to the mapped drive this user now has access to. I will now exit out of here and go back to Preferences. Notice there are a lot of options under Control Panel Settings. It is worth taking the time to look through these settings to see what group policy preferences can do for you. Everything from setting up local printers, scheduled tasks, network connections like VPN connections, power options and other settings can be configured here. There are many options here and every option can be targeted to groups of users, computers, hardware or software settings depending on your needs. Now that the group policy settings have been configured, I will change to my client operating system, Windows XP, to see the effect that these group policy preferences have had. Before preferences can be used in Windows XP or Windows Vista, the client-side extension needs to be installed. In Windows XP, this is done through Internet Explorer. To install the CSE, select the option Software, Optional, and then select Group Policy Preference Client-Side Extension for Windows XP. Once the install is completed, Group Policy Preferences will be available in this Windows XP client. In the other videos, I have applied group policy changes by logging in and off or restarting the computer. In this case, I will instead open a command prompt and run the command gpupdate with the force parameter. gpupdate updates group policy on the computer, making sure the settings have been applied. The force parameter ensures that the client checks for new group policy settings rather than using any cached settings on the computer. In this case, GP Update has asked for the current user to be logged off. Since there have been changes to the desktop wallpaper, a log off is required. There have been changes at the computer level as well, and sometimes GP Update will ask for a restart. However, in this case, only a log off is required.
Once I have logged off and logged back in again, notice that the wallpaper has changed to the Windows XP wallpaper. If I open Windows Explorer, notice that the directory IT support has been created on the C drive. In this directory is the wallpaper directory with the file default containing the Windows XP wallpaper. If I look at the P drive, Notice that this has been mapped to the public drive that I specified in the Group Policy Preference. Above this, notice the L drive was mapped to the London Share. This shows an important difference between traditional Group Policy and Preferences. This drive was already mapped by the user before the Group Policy was applied. Group Policy Preferences did not overwrite the setting and instead allow the user to keep the old mapped drive setting. Group policy, in contrast, would overwrite a setting, not give the user the option. This has been an introduction to the group policy preferences. There are many settings that can be configured, and the target option gives you a lot of flexibility. It is worth the time having a look through the settings to see what you can achieve. For more videos from this course, please see our web page or YouTube channel. For the latest videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you next time.